Okay. Hey guys, I'm Tashi, and I'm going to be talking to you about, you guessed it, Simone de Beauvoir's The Second Sex. So basically, um, what The Second Sex is, is it's basically the hallmark, sort of the first real book that really looks at female consciousness as a whole, and it has been called the book that really spurred second wave feminism. So, what The Second Sex is, it's, is an existential feminist phenomenological account of um, the status of women throughout history. And basically, one of the questions that Simone de Beauvoir really asks is, what is woman? And although she doesn't answer this question, she kind of looks at all the social, cultural, uh, scientific, well, all the factors that play into the construction of femininity as a gender. And basically what's really interesting about the title as well, The Second Sex, is that there's one sex, there's men, and then there's the second sex, women. And basically, in her book, she's kind of talking about how um, women aren't really seen as autonomous human beings. They're seen as the second sex. They're seen as fundamentally other. This whole subject other thing that Simone de Beauvoir really goes into great detail about in the second sex has its roots in Hegel, master-slave dialectic. But what Marx, um, Simone de Beauvoir is a little bit different from Hegel is that um, whereas Hegel can tra like Hegel's master slaves, the slaves can trace their origins back and the slaves can sort of band together to form sort of a group or a class um, women can't because historically they have been tied to men but you can read more on that later um, what else is there to really talk about? Um, a lot of, some feminists later on sort of disagree with um, Simone de Beauvoir because she takes this existentialist view that women can take responsibility for their situation and move past it. And for that in the feminist community, there's a bit of debate. But Simone de Beauvoir really argues that um, any woman who sort of accepts her condition, sort of accepts her slavery, sort of accepts being the other and being sort of pushed out of subjectivity is doing so on bad faith. And even though I did a bit more on subject other, I'm going to go back to it. Um, one really interesting thing about the second sex is there's this one part near the end that we read about that there's this woman and this man sitting in a cafe and as soon as the man sort of turns his gaze away uh, the woman sort of ceases to exist in his eyes and um, what Simone de Beauvoir is really getting at is that women throughout history have been seen through the context of men and that is not good um, what else is there to say? What? How long am I at? You're at 3.43. 3.43. Okay. So you can, that's good, but if you want to say more. Um, I have so much to say on it. Um, it's insane. Um, okay. Um, first chapter of the second sex, basically she looks at gender construction and she looks at sort of biology and then she comes to the conclusion that biology is not destiny and what's really important and what really hammers this point home is that biology is not destiny therefore women although sexually different from men can transcend the limitations of biology and she disagrees with any sort of cultural doctrine that says that women are in the place that they are due to the fact that they're bodies are different from men. Um, how would you relate Simone de Beauvoir to Darwin? How would I relate Simone de Beauvoir to Darwin? That's a really interesting question. Well, so Darwin has a theory of evolution. And um, the second sex, basically, a lot of people historically have seen 
women as histor has have seen women as inferior to men somehow because they don't have a penis therefore they are not fully human beings they like in Freud's view um, the female is a castrated male and hence as I said before the title the second sex there's men and then there's this weird nebulous thing that we call women and that is the second sex and this weird nebulous thing called woman um, Simone de Beauvoir says that uh, to become a woman in this society is to be shaped by cultural contexts that slowly break us down and in this book um, she goes on and on about the development, like how we succumb to the myths, how we succumb to societal pressure, until you have this being that doesn't talk really, that's very nervous about her place in the world, um, is not realized as an autonomous subject, not fully realized in the very existential sense of the world, and she's just kind of running around, having the babies, not fulfilling her existential purpose, and that's what Simone de Beauvoir really wrote this book about, to really throw a bit of a shit fit, and also to analyze her own sort of precarious position as a woman, and a lot of people, even though this is kind of going back to the beginning, say that the second sex is sort of the first phenomenological, I can't pronounce that word, phenomenological sort of account of um, gender in terms of the female gender. So, thanks for listening guys. Revolution Girl Style now.